in the Bay Area working on its COVID booster rollout after the CDC updated its guidelines on who should get a third Pfizer dose. We stopped by this Holy Names University mobile vaccine clinic in Oakland today. Staffers there tell us they plan to start offering the booster one week from today. I think the same people that initially ran forward and got the initial shots and completed the series want that third protection. I know I'll be in line for mine. Joining us live now, Dr. George Rutherford. He's a professor of epidemiology and biostatistics at UCSF, and he's also a pediatrician. Doctor, thank you for joining us. A real pleasure. In addition to the older folks and people with underlying medical conditions, the CDC added another group for those booster shots. These are people 18 and older who are at increased risk of getting COVID because of where that work. Can you clarify who falls into that category? Sure. So it's it's healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. It's people who work in institutional settings like homeless shelters. Uh, it's teachers. Uh, and it's, I mean, you can imagine other sorts of institutional uh, uh, employment like uh, correctional guards and things where there is an increased risk of, of, of transmission. Uh, it's the CDC hasn't really uh, ironed this out completely yet uh, and has spoken more in generalities, uh, but I would expect to see guidance here very, very quickly about exactly who's on that list. Yeah, we ran into, remember these issues that happened, you know, when the vaccine first rolled out a little less than a year ago. How will we make sure people are not jumping ahead or getting that third shot when it's not really their turn? Well, there's enough vaccine to go around, I think, here in the short term. So it's probably somewhat less of an issue. I mean, the people who really should be getting this are people who are uh, who have underlying diseases that make them put them at higher risk of developing severe complications, especially those 50 and older. So the current recommendations are the new current as of midnight tonight, midnight last night, are that anybody uh, 65 or older should get a third dose. Anybody who's uh, 50 to 64 and has an underlying medical condition that would give them a greater risk of severe outcomes like bad lung disease, bad heart disease, renal disease, diabetes, those sorts of things. Um, and then people under 50 to consult with their doctors about whether to do this. And then the th fourth category are people who are, at, uh, uh, institute, who are working in institutions that put them at increased risk, including healthcare workers. What about side effects? For example, if you had a harsher reaction, heavy fever, or didn't feel that great after you got that second dose of the Pfizer, yeah. should you expect that again when you get a third dose and be prepared for it? I don't think we really know. I, I, okay. the, the, the literature says, or the studies have said that they're about the same uh, frequency, and I think we just have to see. I should also add, this is only for Pfizer at this point in time. Right. Yeah, and I, the, another question I was going to ask you is folks that sitting at home that got the Moderna or Johnson & Johnson vaccine waiting patiently to get their boosters, many may be thinking, well, wait a minute, maybe I can just get a third of the Pfizer or get another shot of the Pfizer. Is that recommended? Is there any harm that could come from doing that? Those are two separate questions. No, it's not recommended, and I don't know if there's any harm that can come from it or not. In Britain, uh, where they've started with AstraZeneca vaccine, which is similar mm -hmm. to the J&J &J vaccine in that it has an adenovirus, uh, they have been doing boosting, giving second doses with mRNA vaccines, specifically Pfizer. It is not currently recommended in the U.S. Uh, there are uh, new, new data from Pfizer that just got sent to the FDA this week. Uh, and they may hear that case pretty quickly. Similarly, Moderna's uh, uh, also filed for uh, extending to a third for a third dose. You know, it's hard to say if, if right. you're at really high risk. You know, mixing and matching is not going to be the end of the world, but it's not currently recommended. What about the Stanford for a standard for when people are considered fully vaccinated going to change? Will it become? Yeah, that's a great yeah, three shots sorry. instead of the two. I mean, what is that going to be in six or eight months? Is that going to be the new standard? No, I don't think so. I think we'll okay. probably keep having a standard of, of, of two shots um, it, to be considered fully vaccinated or one shot of J&J &J, uh, in terms of being able to sh have to show proof of vaccination. I don't see that tra changing. There's no particular guidance on it yet, but I, I would be very surprised if it were to change. Okay. Dr. Rutherford, thank you so much for joining us.